Hello. Um, I think I was put in a rather peculiar position in, uh, in, in, in a good way in that I was simultaneously in my um, practicum teaching block teaching grade 9 Romeo and Juliet in what you might call a traditional manner in a traditional class setting and teaching it in this what I would call tech uh, setting, the bring your own device setting. So, I, and they were entirely synchronous um, and I think I therefore uh, have a kind of unique vantage point on uh, what uh, what works, what doesn't work, and what might work. Um, what did I learn from this unit? Well, I, I have, I think, especially three things to say. Uh, the first is that uh, this was to be expected, but it, it came out in spades, and that is that there are steep learning curves. There are always interruptions, there are always inter unexpected obstacles, and so on. And one needs to uh, plan for these as, uh, to the best of one's ability, I suppose. Uh, it is silly to adopt a, uh, or attempt a traditional uh, unit plan and pace uh, when you're implementing something new like that. And we, uh, we knew that, but even knowing that going in, there were still things that came up that um, were unexpected. Second thing is that just as there are unexpected interruptions and learning curves that hinder progress, there are also pleasant unexpected things that came up uh, and do come up and will come up. Um, so, for example, the students are uh, quite apt at this sort of thing, and they were able to hook up to uh, the connections very quickly, for example. For another example, um, we uh, had designed a, 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 an assessment uh, piece that was built around them selecting quotations from the play and matching them to um, uh, public domain images on the Internet. And they embraced this, and it appealed, obviously, uh, to their sense of visuals uh, and their, to their desire to manipulate visuals. And so they were very good at that. But at the same time, I don't want to overstate that. That is, it's not an entirely a win-win thing, nor is it entirely just an example of us bowing uh, to their uh, particular learning styles at this time, which is to say that even with their, um, their aptitude for visual manipulation, finding inventive, creative things online and matching them to this traditional text. So at the same time, they still had standard student uh, problems with understanding literary concepts like metaphorical depictions versus literal depictions and so on. And even though we uh, alerted to them, them to that up front, they still uh, had to uh, experience that for themselves and digest it. Uh, and I think that process is very much ongoing. And the third thing is related to both of those, and that is that uh, for both of those types of uh, interruptions or unexpected things, good and bad, one needs to be as prepared as one can and as flexible as one can be. And I think um, it would be wise to do some kind of dry runs before launching into a unit that banks heavily on, on technology in this manner. We launched right into a unit uh, without really, as far as I could tell, uh, dry running it, um, and uh, therefore, the unit itself became a kind of dress rehearsal rather than a meat and potatoes unit, if I can mix my metaphors. Um, so perhaps it would be useful for people that are starting this to start with something small, smaller than a full unit, and perhaps even something that is largely, uh, to be blunt, disposable if need be. I do think, moving on to another topic, that this, um, this experience, especially twinned with the experience of teaching Romeo and Juliet in that traditional manner, changed my uh, perspective as a teacher. I do have uh, technical aptitude my myself. I'm quite adept at with computers and so on, but at the same time I'm very traditional uh, and one might even say conservative pedagogically speaking. And there's, there are big parts of me that are designed, I think, to resist these things. Uh, and so there was a learning curve uh, for me as well as a learning curve for the students. Um, but I noticed very clearly uh, that as, as we moved especially into the second and third week and things started to become ironed out and students stopped or were able to relinquish some of those jitters and excitement uh, and distractions, things started to work a, a good deal better and one could certainly see promise in a way that one couldn't see in the first week. Uh, and there, that breeds, I think, a kind of enthusiasm that is contagious. And one, I, I certainly got the impression that as week two started unfolding and week three uh, moved along, there was a kind of uncorking of that enthusiasm that uh, energized at least me. Uh, and so uh, my perspective is that I would, I would definitely, in my own chance in an independent situation, 
uh, attempt a unit such as this with the technology. It might not be as, as fully integrated as we attempted here, uh, but it would certainly not be not integrated at all. Uh, and I should say by way of a final comment on that thought uh, is that uh, the, the tech class of Roman Juliet kept uh, almost a lockstep pace with the traditional Roman Juliet cl class, but they did so in an entirely different gait. Um, uh, they were reading in smaller groups. The traditional uh, group was reading in as a class, for example. They were reading on their own. Uh, they were posting on their own, uh, largely unmonitored. The traditional group uh, was engaging in more uh, long-term um, class discussions where there was more immediate feedback. But at the same time, we both got to the same finish line. We just took different routes. Uh, and I think that is speaks to a little bit of an irony that I hadn't expected, uh, which is to say that the tech class uh, became a more individualized class and encouraged individualized learning in a way that uh, I thought was pleasantly surprising. Which leads me to my final topic, which is to, to what extent this um, experiment enhanced to student learning, and I think it did in many ways, um, especially by, by, by ending up maybe inadvertently banking on their individualism. And, and uh, we had several teachable moments along the way where we um, had to encounter the concept of responsibility and accountability in, in posting publicly and posting communal forums. And I, thought, I think that was a very good thing, and I think it helped them grow up as learners a little bit. Uh, and this, uh, uh, or in another way, um, they, I think one could see that some students who might not normally have spoken up in a class uh, were able to speak up through the devices because of that sort of faux um, sense of protection one feels behind a keyboard and behind a screen. And I think that's a very good thing. I think this uh, maybe has, holds the most promise for that, that student who is shy and reluctant to contribute vocally, uh, but would be keen and eloquent textually and, 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 uh, and digitally. Mm -hmm. And I should say that the, uh, uh, it's quite clear to me um, that despite the fact that these were machines and this was digital, what they were doing was creating text. And in fact, they created a lot of text, so much so that it became somewhat of a, a task to decide how to assess it. There was just such an overwhelming amount of it, and that needs to be considered as well. But they were writing. They were writing almost every day. Snippets to be true, to be sure, uh, but um, that writing is writing, and I think they were fashioning text, and I think that's a good thing. So um, there are learning curves, uh, but eventually one gets to a kind of comfort zone, and, and out of that emerges a kind of an enthusiasm. Um, and I, it seems to me, uh, although there were dark moments and grim moments and moments of despair, uh, at the end of the day, uh, what I see is uh, a great deal of potential in ways that I hadn't anticipated.